Think of office politics as the key to surviving and thriving at work. Why did I become an executive coach? I saw lots of great people fail to get ahead at work, while their much less talented peers blew right past them. That made me furious, but also curious. What were great people getting wrong? It came down to helping them re-examine what drove success and then helping them make critical shifts one hard truth at a time. Feel like you're doing everything you were told, but you're not moving ahead at work nor having the impact you seek? Then welcome to 97% Effective with Michael Winderoth, where we skip feel-good, happy talk and engage experts in pointed conversations about what it really takes to move the needle at work and your career. So if you feel stalled or frustrated or seek that extra edge as you move to the next level, then look no further. This is the Hard Truths Playbook you never got. Hi, I'm Michael Wenderoth, and you're listening to 97% Effective. Does the mere mention of office politics make you cringe and run the other way? Or do you know that ignoring office politics is dangerous? but you still can't come to grips with it because it feels so slimy and devious. In today's short episode of 97% Effective, I'm going to share three practical ways to overcome your aversion to office politics. These techniques, shared by past guests on the show, will offer a critical unlock to advancing your career and ability to get things done. If you take nothing else away from today's talk, Remember this one thing. The key is reframing how you see and approach office politics. First, what are office politics and why is managing, even engaging in it, important? Listen here to Camille Jilkins, the CEO of Relevance, the global learning company based in the Netherlands, share a story from early in his career. And then I was the right-hand person of one of the directors, and there was a lot of issues, and he left, he left the company. And I really had a bad relationship with a new US CEO, actually. And I had like three assumptions, all things of a mind, and he moved me to another position where I didn't have impact. And from that moment on, I realized this should never happen again. So I made a commitment and a promise to myself to be at a position of impact. So really, I yeah. learned, learned the hard way and changed my approach completely. And so you learn from mistakes. Camille got burned early in his career, a victim of office politics. He was sidelined where he could not make an impact. Hard and unfortunate lesson that no one wants to find themselves in. Camille realized that being smart, analytical, hardworking, and heads down was only part of the success equation. And from then on, he spent much more attention to sharpening his political skills, interpersonal influence, building relationships, building visibility and brand, so he would never get derailed or ousted. As he shares in that interview, these skills became even more important to getting things done as he rose and later became a CEO. Office politics is nothing more than the way decisions get made. It's very simple if you think of it that way. So think of it this way. Organizations are characterized by three things. Diversity, competing interests, and limited resources. So conflict is inevitable. And politics is nothing more than the mechanism by which those conflicts get resolved. Which leads to why your political skills are so important. Understanding and navigating office politics becomes crucial if you want to protect yourself, not become sidelined like Camille did early in his career. And so you can utilize those levers, call it savviness and influence if that helps, to get things done, which Camille did later to propel himself and serve organizational goals. Think of office politics as the key to surviving and thriving at work and in your career. In fact, the hard truth, research shows our political skills are a greater determinant of our promotions bonuses, compensation, then smarts and hard work alone. So as we say on 97% Effective, don't get furious, first get curious. 
And that curiosity can be stoked by three practical reframes. Reframe number one, see office politics as an engineering problem. Many of us get locked into our own worldview and can't understand why other people can't see the logic and rationality of our argument. That sets us up for a rocky road. Listen to my guest, Raquel Gonzalez Del Mau, executive coach, share how one of her clients changed their approach to get a CapEx policy approved in their company. It's been fascinating to see how a lot of the challenges that highly gifted children face are very similar to the challenges that some of my clients face. Very often, gifted children have attention issues or are dyslexic or have social interaction issues, and they have a hard time dealing with arbitrary social norms and how to navigate social environments that sound like, you know, office politics, and particularly with people who are highly intelligent themselves, who have done really well in uh, their careers by applying like that intelligence and hard work and like a, a lot of skills and have risen to a point in the hierarchy where, you know, like all this arbitrary social norms that we call office politics right. become much more relevant and they have to deal with those. And when like, they have a very clear view of what the CapEx policy should be for the company, and shockingly enough, their colleagues don't see that answer as obviously as they do, and they have to go through the process of communicating and persuading and building the alliances and building the arguments to push things forward and, and get new policies approved or you know, get the promotion to. So when you're working with an individual who may exhibit some of these traits or challenges, is there any interesting piece you can share there? Explain office politics as if it was an engineering problem. Uh, and like explain that, you know, a, a lot of people care much more about their status than about getting things done properly. And efficiency may be less important than building relationships and protecting existing relationships. And once you break it down, frameworks in sentences, in principles that are like, more um, objective, then you can start building your own strategies to get you know, the CapEx policy approved yeah. in a way that doesn't insist all the time on why the CapEx policy is the right one, but in understanding that, oh, the CFO is very sensitive to any reference that may put them in a lower status position. So you need to take care of that, you know, as part of your engineering problem that you're trying to solve. So translating all of these arbitrary uh, norms and communication strategies into like easily understandable rules of thumb or, or strategies like, makes it much easier for people who are like very focused on, on like, rational and objective thinking to deal with some of these less rational <laughs> realities of, of corporate life. Raquel reminds us that people in organizations aren't rational. Decisions are swayed by emotion, by people with influence, or so certain people get cast in the right light. The bottom line, if you want to deal with the less rational realities of corporate life, build that into your model. See office politics as an engineering problem waiting to be solved. How can you put this in practice? Ask yourself, what arbitrary social norms do you see in your company? And how can you create rules of thumb or strategies and how you deal with those to more effectively achieve your goals. You've been listening to 97% Effective with your host, executive coach, Michael Winderoff. If this interview is making you think, make sure to share it with a friend. Now, back to our interview. Reframe number two. Think like a game developer. Engage users. Often, 
we have little choice on who we get to work with. And you have got to make those relationships work. Listen to how my guest, Kashav Patani, VP of R&D at game developer Light & Wonder, went from hating politics to embracing it. Uh, You know, people just blame toxicity for everything because a person disagrees with them or a person doesn't give them what they want. I see it as, well, let's find the problem statement. What is the highest level problem? Let's abstract it out and then start digging in. And so you're now making it a multi-level game. Basically, that's how we design a game, right? Multi- multi-level player role-playing game. So, so you see this as a user engagement problem rather than a political problem. It's just, just a complete reframe of the problem itself. If you see this as, it's political, she's political, this is bad, that's good. Those are all things that basically hold you back. And you're not going to look at it from the point of solving the problem. You're just going to wait continuously. And it doesn't get you anywhere. But if you can state that as a problem statement, this is what my user is looking for, or this is what my user is not doing, now it's a game. Because you need to get them to do something else. So don't whine. Turn it into a challenge or a problem to be solved. Bottom line, what do you need to engage someone else on your critical path? Particularly if they control resources, make decisions, or have influence. For Kashav, this was a critical unlock, an unlock that importantly got him promoted. But even more important than that promotion for Kashav was that better managing office politics enabled his team to flourish. And for Kashav, elevating others to greatness was what gave him most meaning. By engaging rather than avoiding key stakeholders, manage an ego here, listen, address concerns there, build allies to create influence, Kashav ultimately got his team resources and support to innovate, create great products, and advance their careers. How can you put this in practice? Ask yourself, how might you engage a difficult person? Thinking about it like a game developer to get to the next level that leads to serving your larger cause. And finally, reframe number three, change the wording. A simple exercise, take out a piece of paper and create two columns. In the first column, write down all the negative words you associate with office politics. Then in the next column, write how that idea may be done or cast in a neutral, positive, and ethical way in service of your larger cause. An example, brown nosing, sounds awful. What if you called that instead, making other people feel good about themselves and building a connection so you are heard and not dismissed? Another example, misrepresenting facts or lying. Sounds terrible. What if you called that instead, thoughtfully framing information so it puts the right information in context so others see differently or how going along can serve them. The bottom line, change the wording. When we only think of office politics as lying and backstabbing, we dismiss it entirely instead of navigating it thoughtfully. In fact, you can do this exercise in my book, Get Promoted. It's in Chapter 3, Dangerous Myths That Derail Careers. You can also download that chart on my website in the resources section. So in summary, three practical tips to reframe your relationship with office politics. Reframe number one, see office politics as an engineering problem. Understand what Raquel described as arbitrary social norms and build them into your model. Reframe number two, turn off as politics into a user engagement challenge. Think like a game developer, Kashav Batani, who finds ways to engage those on the critical path. And reframe number three, change the wording. Be a bit playful and curious. 
come up with neutral or positive ways to describe political skills, and you'll expand your toolkit in powerful ways. As Camille, the CEO at Relevance, shared, understanding office politics will prevent you from getting sidelined, and navigating office politics with savvy will greatly accelerate your rise and ability to get things done. Because your political skills, that ability to understand others, build relationships, and influence are the critical unlock to advancing. See you next week on 97% Effective. Thanks for listening to 97% Effective, where we skip happy talk and help you break through and ascend one hard truth at a time. Help others discover this show. Leave a review and rating wherever you listen to your podcasts. And if you like what you heard, you can get free resources, including the first chapters of Michael's book, Get Promoted, on his website, www.changwinderoth.com. That's www.changwinderoth.com.